Olivica Efte. Dute. Was was wag wag sot. Odnikta. Odnikta. It's a parcel of old crumbs, a lot of it. I need me reading that for this. Oh, that's my rum the head. Fortunes, fortunes. Hey, hey, hey. This me, I didn't know better than you could do with a shave, couldn't you, my dear? Hi. Ah, hi. That's me riddle me red, isn't it? When is a door not a door? I don't know about that at all. Ah, there it is. Ah, we all read in it. Today, 1st August, opening 230 pum. Brand top donkey derby, fortune tellers, trills and spells, Morris dance and gym displays, prizes, prizes, prizes. And Sally. <laughs> Want any more help, Mr. Blakewaite? That I do not. You've had three butterfly buns already. That's help enough. Go and get under somebody else's feet for a change. Go on. You can give that gentleman a hand over there unloading his van. Oh, that looks nice. Uh, want any help, mister? Up it. That's what you can do. Up it. Woman, kids. Now then, you two. What have I told you about not bothering Mr. Shepherd? Oh, thank you, Mr. Peters. I like that. You're the one that told us to come and help him. I didn't notice Mr. Shepherd, did I? He eats kids like you for breakfast. Anyway, if you want to come to the fete this afternoon, you better get back to Scatterbrook and change. You look like a couple of scarecrows. <laughs> hey, Mr. Shepherd, pass me those coconuts. Oh, I'm all right. You can oh. give me a hand with this if you all like. Right. Oh my, what have we got here then? Now careful, her leg snaps off, you don't keep her straight. Easy does it. Well, well, well. Well, it's many a long year since we last saw that at the village fate. Uh, what is it? What is it? That's town's fault for you, Mr. Shepherd. Don't you know an Aunt Sally when you see one? Oh, an Aunt Sally, is it? I've heard of them, of course, but I've never come across one before. Uh, what do you do with it? You throw those wooden balls at her when you knock her over, you get a coconut. Oh. Where'd you get it? Oh, I got it off a travelling showman. He was camping in my grandfather's field. Have you ever shown it to Miss Lewisham, Mr. Shepherd? You know, her that keeps the antique shop. <laughs> antique shop? More like a junk shop, I'd call it. No, oh, it may be junk to us, but the tourists pay good money for it. And she goes in for this fairground stuff. You know, those old-fashioned painted horses, that sort of thing. I was doing a job for her the other day. You should see her prices. What do you think she'd give me for that, Sally, then? <laughs> oh, fair bit, I should think. Well, she'll be here this afternoon. Why don't you ask her? Help me in the storage tent with her, will you? Right. Oh. Can't you go and set her up, then? What? And allow village kids to throw wooden balls at a valuable antique? Mr Shepherd! Earth was that? Mrs Bloomsbury Barton. Mrs who? Look, Mrs Bloomsbury Barton. Once seen, never forgotten. Uh, Mr Shepherd, I do hope you checked on the public address system. All checked in tickety-boo. My speech may not be of national importance, but I do carry a lot of weight in the county. That's for sure. Well, I shall just pop home to do the final touches, but I shall be back here at 1.45 punctually. Uh, would you like me to call the rolls for you? Unfortunately, I am without a show for today. I've allowed Humphrey the day off to appear with the Morris dancers, and he'll be at it until the fate opens. Anyway, I shall walk home. The exercise will do me good. <laughs> and she's not joking. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you, missus. I'm talking to you. Come here. Damned old faggot. <coughs> Good afternoon. I'm sorry, I've no change. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned change, missus. I'm glad you brought that subject up. How would you like to change places with me? Stand aside, please. Uh, not forever. Uh, just until after tea time. I, I could do with the afternoon off, you see. Will you please let me pass? <gasps> You'd make a fine scarecrow, you witnesses. <laughs> Stand you in the middle of ten acre field. You'd frighten every rook from here to Foggy Bottom. Oh, I... <laughs> I'm telling you, I shall call a policeman. Oh, a policeman would be no good on this job, Mum. Not too ordinary looking. No, you need to be ugly. Like you and me. With a big ugly hat like you wear. I'm making note of your offensive remarks. I've seen you before. 
and I shall know you again. Look, I'm asking you nice and polite, Mrs. Will you be a scarecrow? Just for the afternoon. It's quite easy, Mrs. All you have to do is just take one arm, put it out there, one arm, put it out there. Ah! And... Ah! No, no. Ah! Yeah, madam. Ah! Yeah, Mrs. Ah! M M ah! No, Mrs. Don't care. Don't care. Care. Oh. Well, I'll be buzzing my cood. Children, if you're going to Scatterbrook, don't go up that lane. There's a dangerous tramp terrorizing the neighborhood. She loves me. She loves me not. Who doesn't love you, Wurzel? She loves me. She loves me not. My intended, if it's any business of yours. Not the road on Sally, down at the village fate. Gosh, are you getting married, Wurzel? Don't know. I haven't asked her yet. Then why don't you? She can only say no. That's all you know, Master Clever Dick. She might not be able to say nothing, see? They have wooden heads on Sally's, too. <laughs> Still, might be better to have a wife what can't talk. Couldn't answer back, see? Wurzel, have you ever met her? Well, I might have done. Then again, I might not. Very hard to tell, stuck out here in the middle of a field. He'll have to take the afternoon off. Mr. Braithwaite will never find out. He will if he sees Wurzel at the fete. He'll recognise the clothes. Not if he's wearing someone else's. Isn't that father yours ready yet? It's time we're moving. He likes to get there early. Give him a chance of winning that bowling for a pig. This is Braithwaite. I can't find it. How can a suit just vanish? Oh, you must have taken it to the dry cleaners and forgotten all about it. Well, I don't even know where the dry cleaners is. Come on, come on. Are you sure you haven't seen my best suit? You know, the brown one? No, and anyway, how did you know you were going to wear it today? What's that got to do with it? You look all right, you are, Mr. Peters. Now, come on, off we go. Last again, as usual. But not least, I must thank the ladies of the Women's Institute for their efforts with the refreshments. Cheshire, tickety poo. Uh, the uh, church guild keeps its class for the display with the Indian club, Mr. Cooney for the presentation of E, and Mr. Shepherd, whose traditional Aunt Sally will be making one of its rare appearances today. display is, of course, from my own hothouses. <laughs> well, I now take great pleasure in declaring this fate well and truly... What is that man? What man, 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 What are you doing down here, my dear? You're all topsy turvy. What for are you standing on your head? Oh, st stop your sniveling. When other folks start sniveling, it makes me snivel and all. Please turn it the right way up. Oh, hi. Oh, 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, come on. See what I can believe with you, Arvazel? You were pee with dip, and Marie with dip. Do you were able to have a I'm very sorry, but I do talk scarecrow language. I was brought up too nice. Oh, what's he talk then? English, naturally. English. Ah, well, English is the one language I don't speak. <laughs> I've never heard of English. It's what we're speaking now, stupid. Oh, is it? I thought that was called Yakate. Why? Because that's how people talk, it, you see? They, they go yakety, yakety, yakety. <laughs> hey, how come you can speak yakety when you've got a wooden head? Don't be impertinent. Oh, uh, it's a very nice wooden head, mind. <laughs> as handsome as a human head, your head is. Thank you. Well, if you really want to know, it was the crowman what taught me to talk and walk. What was it? Told me everything I know the crowman did. The man who owns me asked the crowman if he'd turn me into a scarecrow, but I wouldn't have it. Oh, I'm too far much of a lady to be a scarecrow. Oh, you are that, Mrs. Hi, <laughs> you are that. Will you marry me? Certainly not. What for, certainly not? Because you're ugly and stupid. Anyone can see that. <laughs> if you'd live with the Romneys as I've done, they'd have chuck you on a bonfire right quick. Oh. Don't, don't mention that word, Missy. Call me stupid and ugly if you like, but never mention bonfires. What's <laughs> up, so Big bonfires. Don't, don't, don't mention that word. Flames. Like what's up there? Ah! Ah! Oh, stop ah! Stop it, I say. I'm not blabbering. I'm not eating. It's me rheumatic, rheumatic eyes what's watering. Anyway, I, I see you blubbering. That eyes. isn't so. Yes, it is so. That isn't so. Ladies, don't blubber. Ladies, weep. Well, <laughs> then. I've seen you blubbering and sniveling and weeping. Well, what for are you blubbering and sniveling and weeping then? Because something terrible is going to be for me. Oh, what? If the man who owns me wants to sell me, I'd probably end up in America. That's where all the best aunt Sally's end up nowadays. Don't you want to go to America then? A town from what I've heard. Perhaps you'd like me to go to America with you. Keep it company. Certainly not. Oh, well, if you did want to do something to please me. Oh, I do. Uh, I do, Miss. Well, you could change places with me. They think that you were the Aunt Sally. Oh, no, 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 no. I, 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 I couldn't do that. I, I, I couldn't do that. I, I've, got a, I've, got a, I've, I've got a job to do. I have a ten acre field. If you change places with me, then I'll go to Tenacre Field and be a scarecrow. That is, if you ask me nicely. All right, then. Will you go to Tenacre Field and be a scarecrow, Missy? And while we're about it, would you marry me? I might. We shall have to see. <laughs> It's all clear. They must have given up. What do you two want? It's all right, Wurzel. You can come out now. I'll come out when I'm good and ready, not before. No, but I don't want you two person in and minding my business. Anyway, I've got a new friend now, so you two can buzz off. All right, be like that. If it's a genuine Aunt Sally, Mr. Shepherd, then I'll offer you a very good price for it. They're very collectible, you know, especially in America. Well, it's genuine enough, all right. It was bought from a travelling fair over 100 years ago. Mark you, it would have to be in very good condition. Oh, you wait till you see it, Mr. Lewisham. It looks just like new. Well, I feel a right old fool. You're more of a fool than you looked already. How do I look? Oh, too beautiful by half, Missy. Mm. Now, you be sure to go and cover your face with mud and clay and then go and give them rooks a good scary. I meant, just as soon as I've finished your rosebud lips and your rosy cheeks, Close your mouth and keep still. Proper.
Pecan Sally. An antique Aunt Sally? Looks more like a Guy Fawkes left over from bonfire night. Well, that's not my Aunt Sally. It's her clothes, all right. That's a mangled version. Sounds like the work of that tramp to me, Mr. Shepherd. First it's my suit, now it's your Aunt Sally. I'm afraid you brought me on a fool's errand, Mr. Shepherd. Well, that's going to make me an offer, then. Make you an offer? How about tuppence? Might as well chuck it on the rubbish heap. Oh, not an after the fate, Mr. Shepherd. Still an Aunt Sally after a fashion. Want to let the kids chuck a few coconuts at it? They don't chuck coconuts, Mr. Peters. They chuck wooden balls. They get a coconut if they knocks it over. That wouldn't be difficult by the looks of it. Let's give it over there. There you are. She shouldn't fall over like that. Head's a bit loose, Mr. Shepherd. Well, put it back straight. It'll cost you a few coconuts, I'm afraid. Well, I'll make the kids stand well back. Go on now, roll up for the Aunt Sally, knock her head or knock her over and win a nice milky coconut. Ten Pio goes. There we are. Go on now, roll up for the Aunt Sally. Fools. Miss me. Just a minute, Mr. Peters. I've had my own little chat for some time. Just wait in the car here. Yes. Let go of me or I'll jab you with my axe pin. Well, resist the arrest. Well, I need you in place. What? Hands on wooden balls. You can't leave off here. Come on, hey. you'll get six months for this. This underwear. Oh, oh, hey, oh, just oh, a minute. Oh, Come here. My Aunt Sally's missing. One thing at a time, Mr. Shepard. If you please, one thing at a time. No, drop you down here. Oh, get down there. Oh, oh, oh. Buzz off. We don't know with tramps in these parts. Oh, I, I'm not a tramp, sir. Uh, no, sir. Uh, I'm not an honest working man, sir. An agricultural, an agricultural, farm labourer, sir, up at Scatterbrook. Oh, working for Mister Braithwaite, are you? Yes. Sir. He sent you down here, then, did he? That's right, sir. Yes. Uh, it's about this here lady what's locked up inside, sir. Mister Braithwaite has sent me down with her clothes. You see. What young lady? The only criminal we've got locked in here is that man who sold Mr. Peter's suit. Yeah, that's the one. She's no tramp, sir. <laughs> She's one of Mr. Braithwaite's milkmaids. I thought there was something funny about that face. Yes, sir. Well, what's she doing then, walking about dressed up in a man's suit then for? She's barmaid, sir. Yeah, but simple. But do laddie taps if he gets my meaning. Poor soul. Does she often carry on like this? Oh, only when it's full moon, sir. <laughs> and then Mr. Braithwaite locks her up in one of the milk sheds. Uh, he says he'd take it as a, a very great favour if you'd give her a clothes back and, and let her go. Oh, well, I don't think I could do that. You see, it, it, it's Daisy and, and Annabelle and Annie, sir, and Mr. Braithwaite's cows, sir. They moo something terrible if they don't get milk regular. All right, then, just this once, mind. But you tell Mr. Braithwaite the next time she gets into trouble, she's for it. Now, you go and wait outside and take her back to Scatterbrook Farm. Yeah, God bless you, sir. I may feel nice. Never nest in your helmet. There he is. I told you he hadn't been arrested. I thought the police had caught up with him. You did. I didn't. Are you coming home, Worzel? Buzz off. I'm waiting for my new important friend. Oh, come on, Worzel. Don't be all sulky. You can have this box of chocolates if you like. All right. I could do with them. But go on, buzz off. Oh, you are horrible. Come on, John. The nerve of that man is keeping me locked up like a common criminal. As soon as I've learnt to write proper, I shall complain to his superior. Oh, never in mind, Missy. That's all past history now. You just take my arm and we'll go back to Scatterbrook. Arm of a dirty scarecrow, you potty. Anyway, what's Scatterbrook? Scatterbrook? Oh, that's the farm where I work. <laughs> you can live in the barn if you like. Up in the attic where I keeps my eggs. After we wet, of course. You ridiculous, stupid scarecrow! 
Hey, I'm an Aunt Sally. I have made appearances in the best fairgrounds in England. I've had my head knocked off by a prince of the blood. Do you seriously think I'm going to live in a barn and be married to a dirty lump of rags and straw? Well, I could buy a new house if you like. I'd even buy myself a new suit. <laughs> I looked very smart in that suit this afternoon, and I didn't I? You look disgusting, a peasant, and certainly not for the likes of me. I am of quality. You go back to your Scatterbrook farm or whatever disgusting place you come from. Well, I shall tour the world, except for America, of course. I may even go to Egypt. Yes. 